Hello, quick video on using expectation algebra. What's that mean in practice? Well, quite often we have to combine items in our world, so we might be mixing two chemicals, and we might want to know each of those will have a bit of variation in them, and we want to work out what the combined mix, what, what its distribution is going to be. We might be trying to fit a piston into a cylinder in a car engine. They're built, both built with tolerances. What's the probability that the piston will fit inside? So those are adding or um, finding the difference, the sum of the difference of two um, distributions. The next one is we may well be filling bags of apples in a supermarket. And they may well be, each the apples may have a mass distribution. Um, really, we're going to be using an identically distributed uh, distribution for those. But what happens when we combine them? Well, we're going to use our three formulae that we've worked out in the proofs, um, or three ideas that we've got in the proofs videos um, to do this. We know what the relationship between the expectations of combined, combined variables are what the variance of combined variables are, and we also know that if we combine two normal, normally distributed variables, we get another normally distributed variable. And that's that group that we get that we find most useful. So I'm going to take you through three examples here and show how we'd use this um, maths. Okay, let's start off with the chemicals. So we want to make a fluid, a solution. We're going to mix two chemicals together in a chemical factory. Um, we're going to mix water and hydrochloric acid. So it's important that we get the volumes and the concentration right for our final product. So let's say we want to put in 60 litres of water. And um, we know we can pour it in, but there's variation in how much goes in. It's normally distributed with a standard deviation of two. So that factory tells us how good our machine is. And then we want to add 20 litres of hydrochloric acid. And again, it, we can pour it with a sort of accuracy. It's normally distributed. It's going to vary. And the standard deviation is going to be one litre. So the question is, what's... So we make up our mix. What's the probable probability that our new mixture of those two is going to be within our um, below the, um, the critical value maximum of 85 litres? Well, the first thing we need to do is to work out what the distribution of the combined mixture is. So we know the mixture in terms of litres of volume is going to be the volume of water plus the volume of hydrochloric acid. Yeah, that's plus. And we know the distribution of the water, normally distributed 60 mean, standard deviation 2. And hydrochloric is normally distributed 20 uh, litres mean and standard deviation of 1. Using our expectation formula, the expect, expected, um, expected uh, volume of the mixture is going to be the expected volume of the water plus expected volume of the um, hydrochloric acid, 60 plus 20 is going to be 80 litres. Now, the variation, the variance in the mixture is going to be just some of the uh, variances of the water and the hydrochloric acid. Yep, so it becomes more variable. We, we add them together. Um, the variance, we just add those. It may not actually be more variable because we're going to root it, wouldn't we, to get to our standard deviation. So that's 2 squared plus 1 squared would give us 5 litres squared. Now, as both the water and the hydrochloric volumes are normally distributed, so our mixture, our final mixture volume is, is normally distributed. So it's going to have, from as from above, our mean is going to be 60, sorry, correction, 80. And our variance is going to be 5. And you can see that I've just written the 5 in there. And you can start to see why normal distributed variables, we write mean and standard, devi uh, standard deviation squared, i.e. variance, because all this, um, all this math works in variance. OK. And our final question was, what's the probability that the mix will exceed in volume the uh, critical value, critical volume of 85 litres? So there we go, there's our diagram, there's our 85 litres, it's the purple area. If we were doing it from a set of tables, we'd work out the Z value, number of standard deviations to the mean, that's 85 minus our mean 80, 
divided by our standard deviation, which is root 5 here. So our Z would be 2.236 standard deviations, for which if we used our calculator and went there directly, we get 0 0.1267. So that's how we use expectation algebra to do some sort of sum. What about a difference? Okay, in the mixture we've just described, we want to make sure that the concentration of hydrochloric acid is correct. So we might have a, we might be interested in the amount of water in there compared to the amount of hydrochloric acid. And therefore we'd be looking at the difference between the two. So here are, we're going to find a new variable, which is going to be the volume of water minus the volume of hydrochloric acid. And we're interested in that being in inside a critical region. So we're worried, we will need to find the probability it's not. And let's say that critical region is 32.5 litres up to 47.5 litres. So the first thing we need to do is to find the distribution of the difference, this difference calculation, of a water volume minus hydrochloric volume. We know what their distributions are, we had that last time. So what's the expected difference? Well, that's the expected volume of water minus the expected volume of hydrochloric acid. 60 minus 20 is 40 litres. So, so we've got a difference as a subtraction here. But when we come to the variation in the difference, well, again, we're just adding the variances of the water and the hydrochloric volumes, not taking them away because variance is effectively cumulative, it adds together. So here's our 2 squared plus 1 squared again is we've got our variance of 5. And again, as the water and the hydrochloric volumes were normally distributed, so the difference is normally distributed, and we can easily write, therefore, that the distribution of the difference is normally distributed uh, mean 40 variance 5 and now we've been asked to find what's the probability is outside the critical range so more greater than 47.5 or less than 32.5 you'll see that these are actually symmetric around 40 so i can just do the calculation for the top end uh, probability and double it and that's what I'm going to do. So if I calculated the Z for the upper there, we'd have 47.5 minus 40 is the mean, divided by a standard deviation of root 5, means that we are 3.354 standard deviations away from the mean. And not unsurprisingly, using our normal probabilities or straight to our calculator, we find the probability is very low at 0 0.0004. Well, if it's that for greater than 47.5 it's going to be the same value for less than 32.5 from symmetry and therefore the probability it's outside the critical region is 0 0.0008 yeah it's about 0.1 percent isn't it so that's very unlikely to happen okay so we've looked there at two different variables and we've either summed them or found the difference of them Let's have a look at the final example I want to go through, um, and that's where we have identically distributed items. So, supermarkets selling apples in packs of 10. Each apple, is, um, its mass is normally distributed with mean of 80 grams and a standard deviation of 10. Once we put them in the pack, we're going to put a label on for how much the pack weighs, and we want to know what's the probability that the mass is below the label value of 750 grams, which would be a breach of the trading standards uh, regulation. So, first thing we need to know is the distribution of the packet mass. And first thing we do is define our what our mass of our packet is. Well, that's the mass of the first apple plus the mass of the second plus the mass of the third up to the mass of the tenth. And each of those masses of the apples is normally distributed mean 80 standard deviation 10. Using our expectation formula then the expected value of the mass of the packet is the expected mass of the first apple plus the expected mass of the third, second, third etc up to expected mass of the tenth and as each of them is identically distributed they all have the same expected uh, value. 
So effectively, we've got n lots of the expected value. In this case, 10 lots of expected 80 gives us expected a packet mass of 800 grams. Now let's look at the variance. Well, the variance of the packet mass is going to be the variance of the mass of the first apple, variance of the mass of the second, and then the third, and then the fourth, and the variance of the, ten the mass of the tenth apple, all added together. That's what we do with the R formula, which we can see is n lots of the variance of an apple, because they're all identical. So that's 10 lots of 10 squared, that's 1,000 grams squared. And as each of these identical uh, the apples is identically distributed, it's also normally distributed, um, so the packet is normally distributed, mass is normally distributed. So here we have packet mass is normally distributed, mean 800, variance 1,000. And what's the probability then that the packet mass is less than 750 grams. Well, there we are, it's below the average. We can find our Z value, couldn't we, with a calculator? 750 minus the mean of 800 divided by the standard deviation of the square root of 1000 means that our Z is 1.581 standard deviations below the mean. And the probability of that happening is Z in from our calculator would be 0. 0.05699. So it's about 6%. And the um, supermarket might be quite happy with that. Um, but that's how we do it with continuous um, distributions. So there we are. Here's a quick summary that we've looked at before. If we've got independent variables, we can find the expectation and variance of a um, sum or difference of them and multiples of them. And if we add two or more variables and they're all normally distributed, then uh, the combination of those variables will be normally distributed. We can just add them, sum them um, for what we need. So there we are. hope that's of use.